Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back, and season two of Rift is upon us for Epic 7. And I just wanted to quickly throw something out there for you guys to show you guys how I'm getting started in Rift. You can see my team here on your screen. I'll take you through all of those characters, give a couple suggestions in case you don't have the specific characters or artifacts, and let you know what I am doing to actually clear this. So first off, let's talk about the rift controller here so i'm currently at level two which means i only have access to these uh right here i personally have found when using an attack that targets all enemies increases damage by 30 percent to be the best option uh at least for how i'm going to show you how i gear my characters but this one here after a warrior in the front row attacks recovers health of all allies proportional to the damage dealt this can also be really good for you depending on how you decide to approach building your characters I know Tristan is currently working with Wukong on Rage Set, uh, and for him, this is going to be the go-to option. But for me, I wanted to go for something a little bit different, take a different approach, uh, and I'll show you that in my characters, and you'll see why I decided to go for the bonus damage. So, I decided for the Immortal Wukong here to go with a Lifesteal build on Torrent Set. Now, the logic for this is because again it's something that's a little bit different i want to explore stuff that my peers are not already looking at and this is another way to essentially get that so you can either start from damage with rage and then go for the healing or you could start from healing and go for the bonus damage i think this is a bit easier for me to accomplish for the most part we got some purples on here uh yeah i've got the uh 103 here the the perfect crafting piece but you don't necessarily need torrent it's just try to get the best amount of damage stats that you can on a mortal wukong because his damage is so high in this fight that you will life steal pretty much back to full assuming you can survive the very first attack the boss has from immortal wukong your bulk doesn't really matter so much try to get him at over 170 plus speed with some life steal and give him an artifact that gives him some amount of damage i decided to go with our beautiful seasons because it doesn't really require enemy investment and it's just a 20 percent damage increase Victorious Flag could also work here. A Symbol of Unity. Anything that gives you extra damage on Immortal Wukong. Snow Crystal is something I tried, but I felt like it just wasn't with the high damage Glass Cannon Wukong working as well for me. So I decided to not actually go for it. As for other characters here, I really recommend Vivian, at least for the way that I play uh, this fight. She's free. Everyone has access to her, right? So no real qualms about playing Vivian here. Just get as much damage as you possibly can with somewhere in like the 210 plus speed range, 220, as you see is what I have here. For her artifact, Etika Scepter, shout outs to Inori. This was his suggestion. Uh, it's going to make it so that we can constantly spam our S2 Thunder God's Cry if we proc it. So we have a 50-50 chance to go back to back Thunder God's Cry. Gives us a massive amount of bonus damage. One of the other reasons to play Vivian Attack buffer, I think that's huge if you want to have some kind of two turn or one turn clear potential. I should say one round clear or two round clear potential. You're going to need an attack buffer. Uh, Vivian is again free. Uh, gives immunity, which is also a pretty big deal when we talk about the healers. I was using Bernard. Having 100% uptime on immunity has been super, super helpful for me. So I don't have to worry about venom stacks. I don't have to worry about the debuffs that the boss inflicts. So yeah, Vivian pretty good choice if you don't have access to vivian i think that uh mui is a pretty good option you can see i tried her on victorious flag i tried mui a lot of different ways and i found that based on how wukong was geared both vivian and mui were pretty comparable for the most part uh mui for me did slightly less damage about five percent less damage overall per run uh, as opposed to vivian which is why i'm using vivian but for tristan i know that uh, he's had more success with Mui, so use whichever one you have access to. I think those are pretty much the premier two best ones, and considering Vivian's free, there's no real reason not to use them. Uh, let's go take a look at Bernard. So Bernard is a three-star, and yes, I recognize that he is brand new, but from my experience, he has been amazing. His S1 here, right, data collection, it having an AoE heal allows me to basically forego Bloodstone on a Ranger in order to help supplement healing. With the lifesteal that I have on Wukong and this move right here pumped up to plus six, which just costs stigma, by the way. So there's no reason not to be able to get this level. It works really, really well. 
I think if you're going to play Ray, which is probably the next best option, you're probably going to need to run Bloodstone somewhere on the team in order to supplement his pretty lackluster healing. Uh, but yeah, this character obviously was tailor-made to uh, actually clear this. So if you have Bernard, I highly recommend using Bernard. I've had no danger whatsoever from getting killed. As for stats, uh, two major ones to hit here. Speed at 240 plus, uh, maybe 235. Bernard has to be the fastest character on your team. The boss starts going first every single time, and he's going to hit you with a four turn on buffable, which is just, your team is just dead in the water if you're not playing some way to actually cleanse that, right? So that's why Ray and Bernard are usually just seen as the best options. Um, they just give you the immunity, so you have to worry about future debuffs, and again, they just provide sustain. That's pretty much the only reason they're there for. Effect resistance, uh, about 220 gives you... I believe 100% resistance from all of his debuffs, so you don't have to worry about that there. But uh, yeah, just get as close as you possibly can. You'll be fine. Artifact, I'm using Idol's Cheer because this will just boost up the Immortal Wukong. Uh, for me, at least, he shreds like a whole life bar off the boss. So anything I could do to help get him more turns has been super amazing for me. Uh, any other Soul Weaver artifact that you want to play in this slot will probably work for you. If you want to play like a support artifact that gives like extra crit chance like midnight bloom or something you can put that on bernard or ray or whatever have you um destine i think is probably an other okay option in the slot but she's definitely i think a distant third so bernard i think is going to be at least for me the go-to going forward and again he's a three star and doesn't require mulligor investment so if you have him i recommend him he is highly appealing last character to talk about is bologna no real way around this I think Bologna is not mandatory, but I tried a lot of options over Bologna. I tried, uh, just to give you an example of some of the stuff we tried. We tried Asaria, right? Didn't really go super hot. And it was very similar with other characters that I tried. I tried, scrolling down here, I tried Helga. Helga didn't really work super great. Uh, I tried Euphine. Uh, Euphine didn't really work super great. It, it just became painfully obvious after about an hour and a half of just messing around with the fight that Bologna is the best option. Thankfully, um, she is actually up on the banner as I'm recording this, if you are watching this day one as Rift comes out. So if you've got a lot of bookmarks, uh, she's a pretty easy pickup. Uh, I went with a Torrent speed set just to give me the most amount of stats possible that I could get. The major takeaway here is 105 plus effectiveness. So that, that way she has 100% chance to defense break the boss. Assuming, you know, you don't get hit by the 15% absolute resistance. So you want 105 effect this. After that, just pour on as much speed, attack, crit damage as you can get. I decided to go with Torrent because I have an extra set laying around to help boost that damage, but it's not really necessary. Bloodstone is what most people are playing in the slot that I have talked to, but Bernard gives me so much sustain. I needed something to help eke out damage. I decided to go with Iron Fan, and the reason for this is because I found that in some of my runs, I'd get these really awkward rotations where the boss would ultimate and then just, you know, cleanse my defense break. And then I'd be just stuck going, damn, I need Bologna to defense break or I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna do enough damage this run. Like I'm gonna fall short of my goal. And Inori again to the rescue made the suggestion, why not try Iron Fan? And I have a plus 27 that could go to plus 30 that I used to use for Banshee, right? And it fixed all of my tuning problems. So... For me, Iron Fan is going to end up being the play. All right, enough yapping though. Let's jump into it now and I'll show you guys a run with some commentary so that, that way, hopefully, this can get you started on some having some success. <laughs> so the boss is always going to attack first and as you'll notice, he hits you with a massive four turn unbuffable here. This is why you need a cleanser on your team and it's got to be the fastest so you can cleanse it like you saw Bernard did right there. Not having a cleanser means you can't get attack buff, and that completely kills all of your damage. So even with Vivian's EE here, it would not actually be enough to clear all of the debuffs, and that's kind of a big deal. If you're on Idol's Chair, you'll probably have noticed that Wukong went first in this fight, and that's probably going to happen no matter what, even if he's at base speed. Don't worry about this, because yeah, he'll have unbuffable, he won't have attack buff. That's normal. He just gets so much speed from his passive as well as Idol's Chair. That even when I was trying him on base speed on raid set, he was sometimes still cutting to the front. So yeah, don't worry about it too much. You may have noticed also in the bottom right hand corner, I have Wukong's skills set to off. 
you'll see here, we do almost an entire bar of damage or more with his S1. AoEs deal more damage in this game mode than single target attacks, which is another reason why we're playing characters like Bologna and Vivian, right? AoEs are the name of the game. Why would I want to use his S3 when I could just turn the skills off and get an S1 every single time? The only thing that you get out of the S3 is essentially attack buff, but that's Vivian's job, not Wukong's job. Wukong's job is to do as much damage as possible. You'll see throughout the fight that uh, our guy here, Bernard, he is still keeping us tapped off. We get that nice CR push from Bologna there, maintaining our defense breaks. You'll notice also that all these counters keep extending his defense break, which is really good for us. The only way that the defense break actually wears off in this fight is if the boss uses his ultimate, which seems to be a full cleanse. Hopefully, your tuning is such that Bologna has a defense break ready when he cleanses it. That way you can keep up your offense. You can already see really crazy high damage. One turn left to go. And sadly, Bernard cut in front of Vivian. So that's all we got. But there you go. That's two thirds of the boss in one run. And there you have it. As you can see, we got about two thirds of the boss done. And we're still at a low level of Rift Controller. So hopefully this team should be able to carry us to a point where we're getting uh, easy clears in one round. I have... Some confidence that this will probably end up being the team uh, for most of the way through. If we take a look at the Rift controllers that we're going to be getting at higher levels, we obviously already talked about the Fragment of Hostility. But at 8, you get Fragment of Duplication, which means that Vivian doesn't need Etika Scepter anymore. And instead, you can use a damage-based artifact. Uh, and that will also help us get closer, hopefully bring the boss down uh, even closer, especially with the increased damage dealt that we get as our control level actually increases. So, uh, that's pretty good. And I'm confident by the time we get to Rift Controller level 15 with this one and this bonus here, Fragment of Instability, which increases Wukong's damage, we're probably going to be one-rounding it. Um, and if for some reason we aren't, at 21 here, Fragment of Ceiling means we don't have to really play a Soul Weaver anymore because we'll be starting with Immunity. Don't have to worry about Unbuffle. We could start with Attack Buff. And just go firing on all cylinders with four DPS. So that's kind of how I am envisioning things working out for Rift Season 2 going forward. If anything drastically changes, as always, I will make an update video. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe does help me out here a ton. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.